Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. My name's Peter and this is going to be a how to make perfume basics video. Um, I'm just going to share with um, sources for learning and I'll give you a simple formula to make at home that will smell um, like a real perfume and uh, get you started on making your own if that's what you're interested in doing, which I guess is why you're watching this video. <laughs> Um, a good place to start for, for most people will be Mandy Aftel. Um, Mandy Aftel is uh, known for natural perfumery and she has a number of books uh, which do include formulas and uh, teaching guides basically on how, how to make perfume at home. Uh, they're, like I say, basically natural perfumes, quite minimalistic but a good starting point uh, for beginners to understand how to start making their own fragrances and get a little bit of knowledge um, in in perfume creation and the materials used. Uh, Mandy Aftel is a good source. So this is the book that I've got specifically myself. But like I say, she has a number of books. Check out her website as well. In the description below, I will list uh, one of the recipes within that book. If you want to follow one of Mandy Aftel's recipes, um, I'll leave it in the description below for you. And another book I want to mention is A Diary of a Nose by Jean-Claude Eleanor. Now at the back of this, there's a few pages which gives you some basic ideas of different accords. Um, for instance, a pear accord, a pineapple accord, and different types of apple, a green apple, red apple, etc. And so um, that's a useful book for the accords in the back there. And then the more serious books for the, you know, more geeky kind of serious people that are really into it. Sense and Chemistry, The Molecular World of Odors. This one's quite expensive and goes into a lot of detail. It's a lot uh, chemistry based, really. Um, things that most people really don't need to know unless you're really super into uh, chemistry and science and understanding uh, more that side of it, technical side of it. There is some interesting information in here about specific perfumes and percentages of uh, certain materials that they used. Um, but for most people, um, it probably won't be of interest, like I say, unless um, you've got an extended uh, knowledge of chemistry or you're, you really want to understand more the, the scientific part of perfumery rather than um, experiential with the nose and with feeling. And another book that's well known is Perfumery, Practices and Principles um, by Robert R. Kalkin. Um, so this is another one that goes into quite a lot of detail and again won't be um, won't be a must for most people, especially watching this video. Um, this is not for kind of beginners, they're more advanced uh, books for people that really want a more of an in-depth knowledge. But I would say Mandy Aftel is the best place to start for beginners. In terms of what you need to make perfume at home, you're going to need to buy yourself some glass beakers um, like these. I use 50ml glass beakers um, obviously to make your blends in and um, you're going to need plastic disposable pipettes. You can find these on Amazon as well as the glass beakers. You can get them on Amazon or eBay. Just generally online you'll find them quite easily. So disposable plastic pipettes and um, if you want to do things really properly then you would need a scale. For this video we're not going to do scales because the way Mandy Aftel teaches beginners is all drops. So it's drops from a pipette and that's kind of a very basic uh, beginner's guide to, to make perfume at home. Uh, so it's less uh, less expense and less technical. Um, so we're going to be do following basically a guide from Mandy Aftel but I've made it my own formula instead of copying hers. Uh, but if you want to use a scale um, that's more accurate. My scale is an Oheus scale and again you can find them online. In terms of where to buy oils from and I'll get into a little bit of uh, how perfume is made. So 
There are links in the description. I'm not sponsored by anybody. I don't get any cutbacks or feedback or anything from providing links. I just do that because it's where I buy things from and it's helpful for you. Um, so if you click on them, I don't get anything for it. It's just helpful. So people, people, brands like uh, Perfumer's Apprentice in America are a good option. Um, and yeah, there'll be a few links in the description uh, for that. And so perfume is comprised of different oils combined together to create a scent. So the most common that most people will be familiar with is an essential oil. We've, most of us have grown up knowing about essential oils and they are a natural oil uh, derived from nature. So like lavender, for example. And um, so essential oils, then you have absolutes. An absolute is basically a, a more concentrated oil. It's uh, taken in a slightly different way. And then, um, and then you have things like tinctures. A tincture is basically where a substance is soaked in alcohol and the alcohol takes in the scent from whatever's within it. So for instance, you could tincture uh, saffron pods or vanilla beans, things like that, and you could tincture them in alcohol and then the alcohol takes on the scent of the vanilla bean and then you would have a vanilla tincture. There's, there's multiple different um, extraction processes like CO2, um, CO2 extraction where they use gases to remove. Um, so like uh, they put like a glass bulb around the flower, for example. But um, we don't really need to know too much about that for, for beginners. So basically you're combining uh, things like essential oils, absolutes and tinctures um, to create a, an accord or multiple accords within a perfume. Um, typically comprised of top, mid and bass notes, but not necessarily. The way I do things, um, I don't tend to use top notes very often. I really work in mid and bass for myself personally, for my own taste. For modern perfumery, um, most perfumes in the world will use uh, large quantities of aroma molecules, which are called synthetics. These are not natural oils, they're man-made and um, they can range from anything from smelling like candy floss, like cotton candy, which is like ethyl maltol, um, to smelling of like um, mimicking florals and things like that, or mimicking the scent of sandalwood, for example. And um, so aroma chemical synthetics are widely used um, in perfume, modern perfumery, and to like a high degree, like 80, 90, 100% of the perfume will be aroma molecule and synthetic. Uh, there's a few natural, all natural perfumery brands. They're more kind of artisanal, indie, uh, small brands. Really the main what's in the public in the, in the stores will be mostly entirely synthetic. So the formula I've come up with for you as a beginning kind of tutorial is a blend of synthetic aroma molecule and natural um, essential oils and absolutes to give you a kind of a mixed media perfume so then it will smell more like what you're familiar with as perfume rather than smelling maybe a little bit more um, homemade which is will probably be the case for most people dabbling uh, beginning wise with just essential oils for example it will smell more like an aromatherapy blend and not like a perfume that you're used to in the store and that's the reason is because of the lack of use, the use of synthetics, which are so common now in perfume. One thing to be aware of with um, oils like these um, is that they, um, you don't want to spill them on any kind of wooden surface because it will quickly remove the, the color from the wood. So if you have like a nice stained wooden tabletop, for example, and you spill uh, <laughs> some Rose Absolute on there, it's gonna, instantly like remove the color from the wood. So what I do is I buy these uh, graphic tablet mats. These are like art craft um, cutting mats um, for like craft people with craft knives, cutting whatever on it. You can pick those up on, again, just Google them, Amazon, whatever, however you want to buy them. But a cutting mat like this, a graphics mat, which is made of rubber, like plasticky rubber stuff, that will, um, really help you keeping your furniture from being destroyed and these uh, where I arrange my little organs so to speak 
And these are just uh, three-tier plastic um, cooking kitchen rack spice things. Uh, you can find them on Amazon. Just put like a three-tier spice rack or three-tier kitchen rack um, on Amazon and you will find things like this, which are very useful in creating your own organs. So I've got one, two, three, four, five of them in like a horseshoe shape. Each one has three layers. You can organize your oils in groups. Obviously I've got um, about 300 or so oils. Um, so um, you're not gonna need that many as a beginner. Just start off always small. Cause I think with any, any hobby, getting into a hobby, uh, a lot of people will fall out of a lot of people will fall out with it um, after so long. It's like um, people wanting to pick up to play guitar, for example. You might buy an acoustic guitar, you might have it for a year, and you might play it a few times, and you might learn kind of half a song, and then you get kind of bored with it, and then it kind of gets put in the corner, and then you forget about it, and a couple of years later, you're selling it on eBay. So <laughs> the, point, the point is don't invest loads and loads of money at the beginning. When you're learning, you want to start off small, only buy a handful of oils, don't spend a ridiculous amount of money. See if you like the process of it, see if you enjoy it, see if it's something that you want to take further. And just see how you feel, you know, as the months go by. If it feels like it's naturally you're really wanting to expand, then go ahead and start buying a little more. But what I'm saying is don't spend too much all at once. Because you might find that you lose interest, you might find that the passion isn't there to keep it going. So just be aware of that and don't get too silly feeling like you have to buy all this all at once because this has accumulated over years. So um, start off small and um, yeah, just have fun with it. And don't be, I don't think you have to worry about um, being too serious. It can be a fun, uh, passionate kind of hobby. You don't have to be a, be a perfumer or have your own brand. It, it can just be something that you make for your own self and for your own family and friends and it's more fun that's what this video is for um, to help people uh, get into that in terms of uh, when you finish your perfume blend um, we're going to be making 10 mil uh, 10 mil perfume in this obviously if you want to make 30 or 50 mil you just times it appropriately um, but you can use uh, you know glass atomizers uh, which you can find on again on the internet, I'm not going to tell you which websites to use, whatever you want. You can find perfume glass bottles. Um, be aware that um, that some may need crimping and then you would need a crimp machine. So don't get into that mistake. Um, look for a screw top if you're going to be buying glass bottles that way. Uh, disposable perfume bottles, you want something with a screw top that you don't need a crimp. Um, or travel atomizers, uh, 10 mil obviously you'd be using something like a travel atomizer which you can again find on eBay or wherever. So when we talk about um, perfume composition, the kind of classical way of doing it is we have a base, uh, a midsection and a top note. So base materials, a base is like the, the longest lasting part of the fragrance, the, the bit that's going to be on your hand for the longest time. Those are the base materials. Those are typically things like musks or resins, myrrh, frankincense, benzoin, labdanum, things like that. Your woods, cedar woods, sandal woods, and your musks and vanilla. Uh, really long lasting materials are gonna be your base notes. Your mid notes tend to be more the floral kind of compositions, you know, rose, jasmine, ylang ylang, uh, tuberose. Um, these kind of things are really, um, um, the mid section of the perfume and then your top notes can be your spices and your citruses your fresh kind of top notes like cardamom lime grapefruit bergamot um, these kind of materials will be considered uh, top notes so then uh, when you make a perfume you would combine your base so for example uh, sandalwood with your mid so let's say rose with a top note, let's say you put um, bergamot on there. So you could have your, your woody notes, your floral, and then your citrus on top. And that's the general kind of uh, simplistic way to look at uh, perfume composition in terms of base, mid, and top. Now, that isn't like set in law. For example, you can make a perfume completely comprised of just base notes alone. You can make it out of base and mid and just not bother putting any top notes in. 
Um, so really that's up to like artist discretion, so to speak. It's like painting a picture, how, what, how many colors do you want to use? How complex do you want the picture to be? Or in creating music, how many chords should the song have? Is it just gonna have four chords? Or are you gonna make something that's really, really complicated? <laughs> So you can go any way you want with perfume, just as you can with music, as you can with painting. If you want to dive in and make something that's super complicated and use 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 materials, then people do that. But then you can also make a perfume with just five or six materials. So it's, it's really, it's your own discretion and kind of what your heart tells you to do, basically. So just go with the flow, enjoy the creativity aspect of it. Um, I'll give you a few examples of just basics. So when we talk about accords in perfume, an accord, there's, I think there's two ways to look at an accord, but we'll we'll give the kind of more the the proper definition, I guess. Uh, an accord, really technically, is where you combine um, two or more materials together to create something that's unique among itself. So you're combining multiple oils together where it no longer smells like those individual notes, it actually creates a whole new smell. So um, patchouli mixed with uh, grapefruit makes uh, chocolate orange, for example, which you, you, you know, that's kind of unusual, but it does, it smells like chocolate orange. So then you're taking two things that smell a certain way, you're combining them and it makes something new. That's the basic definition of an accord. So let's say um, you've got an incense accord. Now an incense accord would typically uh, start off with myrrh and frankincense, and then you would build on that with complexity. So you could add other resins in there, you could add different woods, you could add spices, um, and you create an accord, an incense accord. So uh, think of it as creating an illusion of something is another way to look at creating an accord or what an accord can be is that you're, you're seeing something that you want to mimic and then you create and mimic that to replicate what you, you want, your, what your desired result is. Say if you want to make a smoky incense, you, you put these notes together to give you the illusion of a smoky incense. That is also an accord. Um, so yeah, basically. Um, we can make perfumes by building accords together to create a pattern of like um, a chord in a song, for example, where you, you're taking single notes um, and then create a full chord, which gives you that, you know, the, the chord of the song It's a fuller sound. That's what an accord does to the perfume. And so uh, you could build a bass accord um, and then you could build an accord for the midsection and a chord for the top however you um, kind of want to structure it. Now, you don't have to use accords, so to speak. You could use single individual notes and create a perfume that way too. So you're not um, always reliant on accords, but that's the most kind of common um, step in creating perfume is the use of accords. But like I say, for beginners, that's not particularly um, essential. Um, you can dabble just putting two materials together and seeing how they smell combined. So a good way to do that um, is to get uh, paper test strips. So a good way to do that is to get paper throwaway disposable test strips and you can open your oil, you can dab it in or get your pipette and just drop a single uh, drop on the end and then get a second strip and then do the same, uh, either dab it in or again, a single drop. You can put them together like a little fan and then you smell them like this and you can smell how those two materials work together and you can go, ah, okay, that would work before you actually go ahead and put it in the beaker and then decide that doesn't smell very good. Because a lot of the time when you're learning, you're gonna be putting things together and finding out that they don't smell particularly good together and that's the learning process of making perfume is figuring out what works together and what doesn't. And that's just practice, that's just a learning curve of figuring, figuring these things out really. This is also a good starting point for creating accords. Instead of wasting oils in a beaker, um, you can have the accord idea in your head. You can boom, 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 boom with like four or five different test strips, stick them all together. You can even put them on a fan like this where you, you pin them on a little clip and then you can smell them together again as a, an arrange of an accord. 
to see if that accord would work. That's a really good way of um, seeing if it's going to work before you waste your oils in the beaker. So it saves you, you, you know, save you money really at the end of the day um, to create, to see if you think that that idea is going to work. If it does, then you can slowly add drop at a time each material, smell it as you go to see if you like the balance. And perfume really is about balance and harmony. Um, so the thing you've got to remember is that you can never take away, you can always add. So always start off with the smallest amount to see if how that smells first, see if you like it. If you want to add more, just add a little bit more and then test it again. And you, you build up a balance of, okay, this and this, is nicely balanced. I don't want to add any more of this particular material. Um, so if you're using rose and jasmine together, you'll you will find um, a balance there where um, you you like that. It, like it's it's a naturally appealing. Oh, I found my sweet spot, so to speak. So um, if you go over that, you can never remove it. So that's something to bear in mind always kind of go under and then you can add more. Never go over because you will, like I say, you cannot remove that oil once it's in there. So take your time to get the balance and the harmony because that's what perfume is. It's a balance and a harmony of notes to your personal taste. No one can tell you if your perfume is good or bad because it's made to your personal taste. You, Your nose is specific to you and your brain and your memories and associations. So if you like it and you like that balance, um, don't be put off by someone else telling you that they don't like it or it doesn't smell good. If it smells good to you, it smells good to you. That's the end of the story. So in the Monday F Tell book, uh, she recommends uh, 33 drops of oils, mixtures of oils with eight milliliters of perfumes alcohol. So this makes about two mil um, uh, juice, so to speak, two mil of the perfume oil with eight mil alcohol to create a 10 mil perfume finished product. Um, and so we're going to be working off that basis based on her book as well as her uh, recipe in the description below mine. So it's up to you which one you want to follow. The one I'm going to be creating will be a unisex fragrance, maybe a little bit leaning more feminine, but generally unisex. And it would be kind of a spring summertime fragrance. That's kind of the daytime. Uh, it smells like spring. It's a little bit zizzy and bright in the top. We're going to use... Um, uh, some nice materials that's going to give you kind of a zingy freshness and a kind of a fruity muskiness. Um, it's going to smell good. It's going to smell like a real perfume and um, hopefully you'll enjoy it. It's a minimal kind of simple perfume, but um, it will give you a basic idea of of the starting point as a beginner to, to, to start figuring out how to make perfume. And I will give uh, links again in the description to uh, to where to buy these things. One important point to make when creating perfume is that um, these plastic pipettes, you don't want to reuse them. Um, so these are really one-time use. So let's say I'm using a rose absolute. So I pick up a rose, I, I take three drops, I put it in my beaker, I put the bottle back. This pipette wants to go in the bin now. Do not use it and don't put it into any other oil because you will put that rose oil obviously in your lavender or whatever you pick up next and then your lavender is going to get ruined because it's going to smell of rose. So use disposable pipettes and only use them one time. If you're worried about plastic waste, um, I recommend, um, I don't have any right here, but you can get um, basically glass beakers that have a pipette installed within the lid so you have a squeezy top um, and it sucks up and you can the, like a bulb and you can do it that way, but it will require you buying oils in containers like this and then pouring it into another container that has, you know, the screw bulb. Um, just be aware that if the oil goes into the bulb, it can corrode the rubber of the bulb that you suck up with and it can perish it. So just be, just watch your oils if you're doing that. Um, but for a beginner, like I say, if you don't want to use um, disposable pipettes that way, where you're wasting a lot of plastic. So if you don't want to use a lot of plastic and be throwing plastic away, which isn't great really, but um, use the the little glass uh, bottles with the with the pipettes installed in the lid, and you can pour them in there and label them yourself. And that way, 
you just unscrew and use the drops from the already installed thing. You're not going to contaminate any of your oils, but that's very important. Uh, make sure you do one or the other. Just don't mix oils together, basically. You want to keep them all really nice and pure. <laughs> you don't want to mess around with them. I'm going to mention briefly, there are a couple of materials in here that I'm using that you want to be a little bit careful of. Vanillin is a material I'm going to be using in this formula. It's very common in perfume, but do be careful as a beginner because if you buy it normally, it will come as a powder and then you will have to dilute that, which you'll need a scale to do it properly. So please only buy ones that are pre-diluted. So at Perfumer's Apprentice, for example, you can get it at 10% in dilution. And so it's already diluted for you at 10%. And that's what this formula is. It uses a 10% vanillin. Um, just to be clear that you don't go out and start buying powders which you won't know what to do with, make sure it's you're buying a 10% one for this. And benzoin is another one. That's It can be a very thick resin. Uh, you would have to heat it up to use it properly. Um, so we're going to be using a 50% dilution of benzoin. So it's diluted down 50% in alcohol. That will make it a lot easier to use. Uh, you won't have to heat it up the same. And uh, it's, like I say, much more easier. So just make sure you're buying uh, the correct uh, dilution of it, so to speak, to where it's not going to cause you trouble. Apart from that, uh, there's not much else to say. Uh, so we'll get into uh, the formula and we'll start off. So we're going to start off with the first material, which is called timber silk. Um, this is a similar molecule to ISOE Super, but we're going to use timber silk. This is really easily available and it's not very expensive. It's quite cheap and it's used in a whole heap of uh, commercialized fragrances. It's a very common material that you'll recognize and it's going to make it smell like what you would associate as a, as a real perfume, so to speak, from, from a shop uh, rather than a homemade thing. So we're going to be using seven drops of timber silk to start with. Timber silk has kind of a musky, very pale kind of wood kind of aroma to it. It's woody, it's musky, it's light, it's airy. Um, and that's kind of what it will give to you. Uh, from there, we're going to add our ambretolide. Ambretolide is a musk molecule, so it's going to kind of smell like fresh cotton laundry. Um, basically, imagine like um, fresh towels out of the laundry. You have that kind of musky, uh, soapy kind of freshness. That's what ambretolide will give to you. Very smooth, very cotton-like, uh, almost a little bit soapy. That will give you a nice muskiness to this fragrance and provide a solid base combined with that timber silk. So we're going to add six drops of ambretolide to our seven drops timber silk. Next up, we're going to add the vanillin, which is at 10% dilution. I want to stress that it's diluted to 10%. Make sure you don't get the powder. And we're going to add six drops of vanillin. Vanillin is a, basically a synthetic vanilla accord or vanilla note. So this is going to smell like kind of vanilla icing sugar. It's super vanillary. That's going to give you the vanillary sweetie goodness to this fragrance. Following that, we're going to next add benzoin, which will be a 50% dilution. Benzoin is a sweet uh, resinous material that's it's slightly vanillic and sweet and kind of syrupy and, and really good. It smells great. Um, benzoin um, will give you a, a really nice, sweet, warm, resinous base to this fragrance. And we're going to use five drops of benzoin. Next, we're going to add Rose Absolute. For this uh, particular formula, I've used a Bulgarian Rose Absolute. Um, I'll leave it to your discretion uh, what you want to use, but I used a Bulgarian Rose Absolute at 100% strength. And we're going to use five drops of the Rose Absolute. So that's five drops. Next up, we're going to add two drops of Lavender Essential Oil. And um, this will give it a, a kind of a bright freshness and um, make it smell really good. It's going to, the lavender will be subtle, but it will give you a, a perky kind of freshness to the top notes of this. And combined with that, kind of the, the rose in the mid. Moving on from the lavender, uh, we're going to use um, a material called C14, an aldehyde C14. This is a peach molecule and this kind of, it's um, kind of a, basically a lactonic kind of peachy 
musky, kind of soapy, um, almost kind of a blanket effect. So it's kind of a blanketed, soft, pillowy, peachy, creaminess and soapiness. And it's going to give a kind of a roundness to the fragrance and also a warm kind of round, soft sweetness. Uh, which will work really well with this and give it an interesting top note. Uh, so we're just going to add the one drop because this is quite strong. Um, you don't want to overdo it, it will overpower the fragrance so one drop is, is enough for this. And we're going to finish this perfume off with a zingy top note. We're going to use a ginger absolute. Ginger, obviously most people will be familiar with how ginger smells. It gives a bright, fresh, kind of fiery sparkliness. And we're going to just add the one drop of Ginger Absolute, which will give that kind of peachy, floral, um, a kind of a crackly kind of bright sparkle. It's going to smell sparkly and um, fresh and invigorating in the top notes. And that's it. So once we've added those materials, so we've got seven Timber Silk, we've got six Ambretolide, uh, five Benzoin, six Vanillin, five drops Rose Absolute, two of the Lavender, one of the C14 peach aldehyde and one drop ginger. And then once we've done that, we're going to top the beak up to the 10 ml level, 10 milliliter level with perfumers alcohol. In the UK, I can recommend um, one in the description that I use personally, Mistral alcohol. Um, if you're in America, I will leave a link in the description where you can pick perfumers alcohol up from, but primarily it's based in ethanol. And uh, so just fill that up to the 10 mil mark and you will have a finished perfume which you can basically bottle straight away. Um, I won't get into things like maceration because that's I don't think you need to know about that for, for a, a beginner for such a simple perfume. But maceration is the process of leaving your oils to what they call macerate. Basically, imagine it like you've created a soup. You want to let the soup sit for a while for all those flavors to infuse. That's what the process of maceration is. So before you add the alcohol, you let those oils infuse together and you can leave it for a month or more um, to infuse and, and create these chemical reactions with each other where the scent may change in that time. And then you, you can top it up with alcohol after that. But for, for beginners and for very simplistic perfumes, it's really not needed. You can bottle that up straight away and wear it immediately. Um, that's it. That's how to make perfume for beginners at home in a very simplistic way where you don't need uh, fancy education. You don't need to go to perfume school for years uh, to do very basic uh, perfumes at home. You don't need a fancy scale. Um, all you need, glass beaker, some pipettes and an experimental mind and just have fun with it and see what you can come up with. Start with... Um, combining two materials together and seeing what the outcome is. So if you pick a, a group of materials you want to start off buying, I'll, I'll leave um, some suggestions in the comments, but sorry, in the description below, which will give you kind of my input on what would be the kind of essentials for, for beginners to, to start off with. If you want to buy some of those um, and you can start combining, you know, like I say, two or three of them together. Like I say, the test strip way is a really good way because then you can basically go through all the oils you own by pairing them together with the scent strips. You're not actually wasting your oils. You've only used a, a dab. And then you can take two, you can see how they smell together. You can take a third one, see how the three together smells. And then you can mix, mix and match and you'll get a really good idea of how all these different um, oils are working together and what kind of scents they make when you combine them to figure out how you're going to make accords in the future. Um, that is the for me, the, the best way and the most simple way, the most practical way of, of a beginner learning. You can also keep a journal. This is something real perfumers do when they're going through perfum perfumery school. You can keep a journal um, of uh, accords that you've created and ideas so you can write, you know, rose and jasmine and, and, the, and smell them together and, and write your impression of what that gives to you in your mind. And then you can, you can take you know, different materials, combine them together to create and then write your impressions of of colours, of, of texture, of however you want to uh, remember those things. You can write them down um, to give you that kind of recall when you when you look through. 
and that will be really helpful in your learning process of remembering how things smell and remembering combinations of things. I hope you found that helpful. Um, again, this is meant to be a very basic um, how to make perfume video at home for beginners. It's a really good starting point. Um, hope you enjoyed it. Hope you like the creation. I think it smells quite nice. And um, again, it's simple, but it's a really good starting point for beginners. It will give you something that smells like a perfume and a really good kind of solid starting point for experimentation. Uh, check out the description below uh, for more detailed information. And that's it. Hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you again next time with another one. Good luck. Take care and uh, have fun. Enjoy it. Bye everyone.